the Financial Survival Network, helping you survive and thrive in the new economy. Go to carrylutz.com and sign up for 30 free micro-trainings on financial survival. 1490 WGCH, this is Carrie Lutz, and you're listening to the Financial Survival Network, which is brought to you by Miles Franklin. They've been in business selling gold and silver for over 20 years, and I'm a customer because when you buy, they ship. For more information, find them on the web at milesfranklin.com or give them a call at 800-822-8080 and get a free quote. This is Kerry Lutz. We're live at Hard Assets New York. Been a great crowd. A lot of uh, listeners. Thank you for stopping by the booth. Thank you for your support. And it's because of you that I'm doing this show. It's because of you that there is a show. And I highly recommend that you check out Hard Assets online. A lot of presentations will be there. And frequent contributor to the show, Ron Hera. He's got a booth here. We were just going over a series of really depressing charts, and the theme of it was take the blue pill or take the red pill, and I think I'm going to go take the Xanax pill after watching that presentation. Hey, Ron, thanks for being back on. Hey, Kerry, how you doing? Doing great. So, so what's your feeling about the show here? Well, it's a good show. There's a lot of companies here, a lot of good speakers, very uh, interesting show. The, the, the sentiment in the crowd is not very positive, I think, because of the the share price is being depressed and the, the precious metals price is being down at, at the present time. And that is really unfortunate because it's noise, it's short-term moves, it's intermediate moves, and you have to be able to see past the noise to the long-term trends, and that's what we were just looking at on your screens. Long-term trend, sum it up. Well, this, this could go on for some time in terms of the share prices being depressed or gold and silver prices being down. And the reason for that is that the current uh, meme is basically the, the dominant social theme is basically the post-recovery meme. This is a, a version of the world where uh, the recovery already happened, America is back, it's business as usual, there are bright spots in the economy that illustrate the recovery, Silicon Valley is, is going strong, uh, Texas and Montana with shale oil and shale gas, the unemployment numbers are coming down. So the cheerleaders are basically uh, running full, uh, full tilt uh, and uh, that's, the, uh, that's the prevalent belief. And as a result, I think a lot of investors who had sought uh, inflation hedges and other uh, security in gold and silver have basically uh, gotten out. And you do understand that there's nothing new about this, what Jim Sinclair would call MOPE, Management of Perspective Economics, what others among us would call propaganda or outright lies. We had it during the Great Depression, and I'm not going to start singing, but happy days are here again. And you know what? The happy days didn't come till after World War II, till the 50s, when the whole boom in the U.S., the post-war recovery, really started in earnest, right? Well, yeah, I think that this, uh, this post-recovery meme is absolutely false. And also, it's been bolstered significantly by the weakness in the eurozone, and that's why the dollar has rallied. That's basically magnified the downside move in gold and further crushed the, uh, the precious metal stocks. But the bottom line is the United States is not any better off than Europe. In fact, even Spain's debt-to-GDP ratio is lower than that of the United States, which is, you know, ours is around 100% right now. Theirs is, I think, 67%. Uh, and Spain is in, supposedly in worse shape than we are, the, the advantage the United States has is we have the Federal Reserve. We can basically, we have our own central bank, we can basically print money. The problem is, of course, that that devalues the currency. So, Ron, the argument is, and this is like uh, the worst type of chauvinism, and it's really ignorance, is we're America. We have this exceptionalism. We're different. And the rest of the world is living in the past, and the U.S. is running headlong into the future. How do you counter that argument? Well, first of all, America used to be different. There was American exceptionalism when America uh, represented a free republic. Uh, but today, that is not the case. Uh, we have a, a very bureaucratic, uh, so, quasi-socialist system uh, where you have socialism for uh, the great masses of people, whether that's food stamps or Social Security or, or Medicare or 
uh, the Obamacare, uh, and at the same time you have an entrenched uh, crony capitalist structure, and that uh, merger of uh, big business and the government is essentially fascism. So you have a, uh, a fascist system. So we really have the worst of all possible worlds, don't we? Well, I don't know if I'd say it's the worst of all possible worlds, but it isn't good. So you're Joe Two-Pack, you're Joe Six-Pack, whatever, and you have to do something. You've managed to accumulate a little bit of wealth, and you feel that it's slipping through your fingers. What can you possibly do to protect yourself? Well, I personally am staying out of the Dow and S&P 500 stocks. I think the Dow at 13,000 is, is absolutely unsustainable. I think we could see further increases if the dollar weakens again, but those are nominal increases. And if you actually have a nominal gain and then pay tax on that gain or you pay brokerage fees on that gain, what's really happening is that the principle of your investment is being eroded. And if you adjust the inflation, uh, the Dow rather for inflation, looking at the last 10 years, there really hasn't been any gain. Uh, and that's using the, the government's own inflation number, which I think a lot of people uh, believe is biased uh, to the downside. Yeah, well, I throw out this example. Just the other day, my car has to take premium gasoline. So I filled up with an $84 tank of non-inflationary gas. Uh, I don't know where they get these numbers from, but they sure do seem like they're fixed, don't they, or cooked? Well, the inflation numbers are clearly distorted, and uh, there are many... Uh, reasons for that. And in fact, the, the changes in the way the numbers have been calculated are well known. And if you calculate the numbers the way they used to be calculated in the 1980s and before, the inflation rate is actually closer to 10% right now. That would be consistent with the recovery in retail sales. And in fact, it would account for that recovery in retail sales, which means that, in fact, it's not the case that there are more consumers buying more products and services. What's actually happening is people are simply paying more for the same things, particularly food and energy. More for the same thing, or the same for less, or more for less. And to me, the best indicator of the true rate of inflation is the annual increase in the price of a Thanksgiving Day meal. In 2010, it rose 13% from 2009. In 2011, the last Thanksgiving, it rose another 13%. Because so, the basket of goods that you buy, your food and all that, for Thanksgiving really is all commodity-based very sensitive to the true rate of inflation. So we see this, so we need to invest. How do we invest? What do we do? Obviously, gold and silver needs to be a core part of anybody's portfolio. Just like you have auto insurance, you have health insurance, you have casualty insurance, fire, flood insurance on your home, you need to have uh, governmental screw-up insurance for your wealth, gold and silver, but there's also great opportunities in this mining sector. We see it constantly. It's beat down. It is truly the dog of the market now. So how do you go about finding a few of those stocks that are going to really go a long way? Yeah, well, relative to the metals prices, the stocks have never been this cheap. Well, they haven't been this cheap since 2008, basically. And there are companies now that are trading near their net asset values, that have companies that have strong balance sheets, cash in the bank, that have strong cash margins for production. But what's being priced into the market is something like $700 gold. And uh, for that's for the gold stocks. And that's simply not the case. Uh, there's no reason to think that gold will fall to that level. Uh, and so the stocks are basically discounted. And what I've done is I've I've gotten rid of uh, companies with lower grades. I've gotten rid of companies with higher production costs. And I've gotten rid of a lot of exploration stocks, and I've shifted, uh, our investments have shifted uphill, so to speak, into more established companies that have strong cash flow and expanding cash flow. So you're really getting the cream of the crop, and because you can buy quality for such a discount, it effectively lowers the risk of your portfolio and your investments, right? Absolutely. I'm buying cash flow at a discount, and I'm also repositioning as the market continues to slide. And what will happen is, and, and you know, obviously, I'm not going to go all cash and wait for some supposed bottom, but uh, I'm waiting. I'm basically repositioning for the for the rebound in the stocks. In other words, I'm getting into the companies that I think are going to are going to rebound the most vigorously. And when that does occur, I can take profits from those companies and and speculate or move into less developed companies. And that is a really smart strategy. And for people, if you want to find out more. If you want to contact Ron, go to heraresearch.com, H-E-R-A, research.com. 
Ron really knows his stuff. He gave me a company recommended when I saw him in Vancouver called Trelawney, which subsequently was bought out at a major premium. So Ron has my respect and uh, total confidence that when he talks about a stock, he's actually done the spade work and knows about it. And anything else you want to add, Ron? Uh, well, I would just say that uh, visit the website. I've got a new analyst report up there on uh, Fortuna Silver. It's a report that we produce, obviously. And uh, that's, a, that's a good company that uh, I think is uh, discounted right now. All right. And I just have to disclose I've owned that stock painfully for about a year and a half or so. But I like the stock, too. Not a recommendation by any stretch. I'm not a, a certified financial analyst or uh, advisor. And it just looks like a good stock with silver. We need silver. We don't have enough. Anyway, Ron, thanks for being on. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for having me on.